Hi everyone, welcome back. In this tutorial, we are going to look at another type, another type of problem that is not uh, that do not give that does not give you the percent composition of the element, but instead they give you the mass of the element. Now, a lot of people would get um, not used to the type this type of question because it's not percent. It doesn't really follow the procedure. But if you understand what we did in the previous tutorial, then you should have a good understanding on the meaning of each step. So here we are given the two masses of uh, of the element. We have 11.666 grams of iron and we have 5.01 grams of oxygen. So based on these two information, we are going to find out the empirical formula. So first, people would as soon as we ask, so when do we start? Do we assume 100 grams again or do we convert it to the percent composition or what do we do? So some students would come up with the idea that while well, we have these two masses, so what we can do is to combine these two masses, which is the total mass of the compound, and then going back to the percent composition, assume 100 grams, and then do the whole procedure again. Well, that is okay, but it will waste too much time for you to finish the problem. But instead, if you understand the concept, well, the problem is halfway done already. So let's see why I say that. Well, for the, in the, the problem that we saw in the previous tutorial, we are given the percentages. And we said that the, the percent is a relative measurement, it's not absolute. Well, here you see the two masses. Now, these two masses are absolute measurement. They are 11.66 grams and 5.01 grams. So it makes it so easy and it is halfway done, as I said, because we can go from here, right here, and change the mass to the quantity right away. So how do we do this? Well, we have the masses and we are going to change it to the quantity by using the molar mass. So, we have one mole of Fe, and we have 55.847 grams of iron, correct, okay, and uh, what we will get here is a number 0 0.209. Okay, and um, and if you want to be very careful with the significant figures, then we should have 0 0.2088 mole of iron. Okay, so this is what we have from uh, from here, and then we can do the same for the oxygen. We have one mole of oxygen, sixteen grams of oxygen and we will have 0 0.3131 mole of oxygen so now we have these two quantities ready and we can go ahead and compare them by dividing by the smallest number which is going to be this number And again, the reason why we are dividing by the smallest number is that we will have, we will like to have the elements that has the smallest quantity to have the number one as the subscript. Because we understand the fact that if there is an element in the compound, it exists in the compound, and um, it is going to have some kind of subscript. So it is going to be at least number one. At least there's a one there. Now it doesn't mean that it is always one, or it may not be the case, but it, at least there's gonna be one. Okay, it will not be zero because there's something there. So we do that, and uh, for this one, if we put in the calculator, you should find out something like this. Okay, 1.3. 
1.51 uh, of the oxygen. Okay, this is the oxygen, not zero. So let me step over here. And now we've got a problem. In the previous tutorial, the number that we get here are the subscript of the element. But here we have one, which is fine, but here we get 1.5. How do we put 1.5 as a subscript? That's not possible because, as what we know in the past, is that uh, one, the subscript of the element within a compound it has to be a whole number. So what can we do to make both numbers to be a whole number? So we got a couple thinking here. Can we round it? Can we add something to it, subtract something from it, or what do we do? Well, can we multiply it? So let's talk about the different methods. Well, if we talk about rounding, it is not good to round this number because if we round, the whole ratio is changed. If we round it becomes two, then the ratio becomes one to two. But think about this, this is 1.5, is somewhere between two and one. So it is not really good, it's not a really good idea to round because it will really mess up the, the ratio between the quantities. So we are not going to divide, we are not going to round the number. Can we add something or subtract something from these two numbers? Well, that would also change the ratio because we cannot just add 0.5 here and 0.5 here. The 0.5 here is different from the 0.5 here because the ratio is different. So adding and subtracting would not be good. So that we then we have uh, multi multiplication remaining. So if we're going to multiply, what can we multiply? Well, think about this. We can multiply a number that can make both numbers to be an integer, a whole number. And one, so here one, 1.5. The smallest number that we can multiply to get to the uh, to get both numbers to be whole number will be two. So what we going what we are going to do is going to multiply this by two, multiply this by two. So what we get here is that we would have two iron and three oxygen. So the empirical formula for this question is going to be. Fe2O3. Iron 3 oxide. So let's do a recap here. At the very beginning of the question, we are given the masses of the elements, individual elements. We do not need to combine the masses together to find out the percent composition because that takes way too much time and the more steps you do, the more mistakes you're going to make. So instead of doing all over, doing the question all over again, let's think about the, the core concept that we are trying to compare the quantities of the elements. Well, if we're going to compare the quantities, then we have to make we have to change the dimension from mass to quantity. And this is the reason why we apply the molar mass to to find out the uh, to apply the molar mass to find out the number of moles of each element. And then we do the comparison, which is just like the first tutorial, and we are able to obtain a whole number by multiplying each uh, number here by two. So we eventually get the uh, the empirical formula for this problem. So uh, uh, so I would like you to understand the whole concept of comparing the quantities and hopefully you will find this very simple, not too difficult to, uh, to accomplish.